Welcome back. It is our New Year's show. One week late, but hey, that's how we roll around here. Although one thing you don't want to be late on, as you probably know, is your payments to things like your credit cards, uh, your mortgage, because, well, your credit these days is one of the most important financial instruments, financial tools that you have. David Murphy is with us, Director of Operations at Credit Insider Club with 22 years of experience. And uh, Credit Insider Club is the Pacific Northwest leading, most experienced credit repair company. Uh, well, David, first of all, Happy New Year, buddy. Hey, thank you. It's good to be back here. Are, are you a big uh, New Year's resolution guy? Well, being in the credit repair business, I get a lot of phone calls. People come to the realization, usually at halftime at the Rose Bowl, <laughs> where they say, this year, this year, I'm going to have good credit. I'm going to clean up my credit I'm report. surprised you didn't say it like at the Discover Orange Bowl, right? Because <laughs> like, you get the ads for a new credit card every two the, minutes. The Rose Bowl <clears throat> is the granddaddy of them that, all. That is true. Uh, so, I mean, so you, t- you tend to see almost people coming at you with the desire to raise their credit score at the beginning of the year for themselves. It usually starts at the beginning until about halfway through uh, January, they get the bills from Christmas, mm-hmm. and then they say, oh, we're going to put it off. <laughs> and then once they pay off their bills from Christmas, then they see what their tax bill is going to be, and so they put it off until April 15th. And so you really end up, people just keep getting behind and behind. They keep and procrastinating, it's to... yes. So, you know, when you start seeing that, and, and I want to get into... Um, you know, personal credit versus business credit in a second. But when you see people and they, you know, they try to make these choices and then, but they're almost outspending their options is what I, I hear you saying. They have all their debt right come up. So now they're pushing it back and maybe they start to pay it down. And now the next tax bills or whatever come up. So they run up their debt again and then they start paying it down. And it's almost as if people just to either have a, a, they're comfortable with a certain amount of credit card debt, and so they're willing to spend that up and then slowly pay it down, but can't really get ahead, and that's what makes it hard. Very difficult. You know, a lot of times when you see people become successful and their business starts to take off a little bit, they go and they buy that brand new foreign car that they've always wanted, or they take that trip to, to Europe or Hawaii and it's not the the right decision. Mm-hmm. You need to make long term goals on exactly what you want to achieve as far as your business is concerned, and keep business and personal separate. And that's a big point, I think, because you know a business can fail, but you can still be you know viable personally. Uh, talk a little bit about maybe the top reasons, or or what 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 is the difference between personal and business credit, and why you should keep it separate. One of the reasons is because if you are using your personal credit to fund your business, whether it's office supplies, inventory, equipment purchase, suddenly you're decreasing the amount of funds that you have to available to borrow against on your personal credit. One of the things that you want to do is, of course, if you're a corporation, is incorporate and get an IEN number. and. Then, and that's just like, I mean, that's a tax identification number. Employer identification yeah. number, yes. Once you have that, then you can build business credit. So one of the first things I recommend is getting about five different cards under your business name. And are they pretty easy to get that first round? I mean, is it, you know, when you're 18, I don't know, when I was 18, you know, you go to your college and they're throwing credit cards at you. Is a new business kind of the same thing? They can they they literally do the same thing, okay? But you need to know what the guidelines are, and you need to know which of those five to get, mm-hmm. okay? There's probably 40 cards out there that you could get just like that, mm-hmm. okay? You need to establish at least five positive accounts, and that's going to take anywhere from 30 days to 90 days to establish that. Once you have that, then you can move on and try and get cash. Cash, 50, 150,000 in cash. And that's not easy to do. And that's really going to a bank. Correct. Bank cards, Mm -hmm. bank loans. But you need to have an established business. Most banks are gonna wanna see two to three years of experience before they're going to give that type of money Mm -hmm. without a personal guarantee. That's the key, is to get the money without personally having to put your 
credit on the line. Well, and you talk about not using your personal credit. Now it kind of takes us into this, not only your personal credit, but some people have more, you know, put their house on the line for their business. All these, all these different uh, assets that they have as collateral. That is correct. I mean, and that's <clears throat> what you see a lot of individuals, you know, sole proprietors. That's what they have to do if they're not incorporated. That's that's a lot of risk. Yeah, your house. <laughs> <laughs> I, I agree. Um, and so when you start doing this, uh, when you, when I guess when you're, I mean, you're essentially collaborating your your finances, right? And you're you're muddying the waters of personal versus business. Uh, you you call it contaminating your credit. That is correct. What does that mean? Well, it, contaminating your credit can happen in a variety of ways, not just from business and personal. Uh, when you get married or you have a partner and you start having joint credit, you are now contaminating your personal credit and hoping that the other person <laughs> pays their credit bills on time. Mm-hmm. Okay? All it takes is to have a joint account and one person miss a payment And you've got a 30-day late showing up on six different credit reports. Equifax, Experian, TransUnion for Mm -hmm. both of you. Mm -hmm. Boom. Mm -hmm. That's a 50-point hit. Mortgage late, that's an 80-point hit. And banks don't want to see any late pays in the last 12 months, Mm -hmm. much less a mortgage late. Yeah. David Murphy joins us, Director of Operations with Credit Insider Club and Credit Repair. Uh, David, so what does that mean then? I mean, I guess... Do you not collaborate your money with your wife and husband, or is it more with your business? I mean, at some point in time, you know, most people are getting applying for joint credit. Well, I mean, when you get this, is commu- this is a community property state. So no matter what, w- when you get a house together, you're both on it. Mm-hmm. I don't recommend getting credit cards mm-hmm. together at all. You want to have a, a joint checking account? Groovy. Mm-hmm. All right? But keep your credit cards separate. Yeah, I think that would make a lot of because sense. Because if here's the whole idea, it could be you could be on vacation somewhere, one is missed, and now you both but you're both not affected. One payment, or you're both affected, right? And if you're both affected, then you're if if they have if you have the joint cards rather than the separate. Correct. If you both have separate, then there's the potential that at least one person still has perfect credit in the family to use. Keep your Keep your credit separate. What are some other big things to keep separate, I suppose, um, when it comes to finances, business, personal? Besides? Yeah, really. I mean, you start thinking about all the places you can get money, right? Well, of course, there's (laughs) borrowing from your family. And, uh, you know, for your business, borrowing from your family... That's a that's a tough situation because if your business goes down, then you've got your family on your case. Mm-hmm. I, I don't I don't recommend that either. I would rather bar- borrow from a bank for my business and <laughs> we're, have we're, it on my own back <laughs> than than to have family members. Where, where you're just you're an account number to a bank. You're uh, there for you're there for the holidays with your family. That's right, <laughs> and uh, like you said. <laughs> It, it, once you get back to work here after being with family for about a week and a half, it's it's a, it's nice to come back sometimes. Yeah, isn't that normalcy nice? I mean, I was just talking about this. This is off topic, but you know, I was, I was just I was talking to my dad and, and my wife. It's like you know, you get through the holidays and you're kind of like, okay, we made it through, and it, it, it's a it's a long process. And I can only imagine, you know, with the holidays now starting about right after what, right after uh, Halloween. You know, the two months of, of being with you know, friends and family, if you owe them all money for a failed business, would probably make it a little bit tougher. You don't want to go there. No. Uh, you know, also this, this, you know, you talked about getting your company's credit up, but whether you really have to do, I mean, you, there's a there's a uh, process to actually building a company that can get credit, isn't there? There is. Y- y- like I said, it's going to take 30 to 90 days to get some corporate accounts, some some vendors. And it, it, the critical thing is, I'm not saying go out and spend a bunch of money. You can spend, you can get a Staples card or Office Depot. You go out and get envelopes, pay it off in the first month. Now you've established positive credit. You've got to use the card at least once, mm-hmm. establish positive credit. Then you've got some history. 
That's the name of the game. 35% of FICO is based on history. And then, but can you rush that process? You can't rush it. A lot of people want to rush it. They want the money now. And that's the problem. You need to have a game plan here. You build the credit, then you go for unsecured credit so that you're not having to put your personal guarantee. Mm -hmm. Then, two to three years down the line, you're positioned to get big time loans. Mm -hmm. 100,000, 250,000, they're out there. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And but really it comes down, I mean, it's this process you have to go through. Because, you know, going back to the what I was talking about at the very beginning of the show, these people, it's very easy to get started, right? It'd be very easy for somebody who have an idea, walk into a bank and go to the bank, the banker, the, the business banker and say, I have this great idea. I need two hundred fifty thousand dollars. That, that would be easy. Right. Sure. But you know what they're going to do? <laughs> they're going to pull up your personal credit report. Sure. And but to keep it separate, as you're talking about. It's that, look, okay, the New Year's resolution that you're going to start a business is, is great. We, it's fantastic. But if you're going to go about it the right way, there's a process. And that's why sometimes that last 10% is so much harder. You know, you go online, you get your, you get your Washington State business license, you get your, you know, your tax ID numbers and whatnot. But then you have to follow this process. And it's, it's A to B to C to D. You can't just go to the bank and go, I, I want $250,000 loan for my business. But I don't want to be liable for it. Right. Well, it doesn't work that way unless you have established credit. Most businesses fail in the first five years. Mm-hmm. You know, I that's a, a lot of them fail in the first one year. First year. And and I I heard something, and I I just heard this a while back, but something like seventy percent of business licenses never earn a dollar. People just go out and they get a business license, and then they'll just uh, you know, they never do anything with it. Kind of like a gym membership. That's right. Which, hey, maybe we'll talk about gym memberships next because uh, gym memberships, man, If <laughs> well, we'll save that for the next segment. David, thanks so much for joining us. We do have to go to break. Uh, that's David Murphy, Director of Operations with Credit Insider Club. I'm Ben Brash, and you're listening to Brash Atomics. We'll be right back. <laughs> 